Okay, we're going to go over the subject of momentum. And when I look at self-defense, the first two subdivisions of momentum that I look at are what I call unchecked momentum and then checked momentum. Now, a good example of unchecked momentum is the car's on the hill, parking brake fails, it just gains speed and it continues on, continues on, continues on until it hits something. And when it hits something, it plows right through it. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with you know, doing this, a great exercise is, I'm gonna put Ashley like this, and she crisscrosses her arms, and then I just say, okay, good, run me over. And you notice when she hit, she didn't stop, it was just wow, like that. In protecting yourself from a punch, the first thing that we're looking at is, okay, unchecked momentum. Now, YouTube is one of the great fight educators of the new millennium. You'll get all sorts of fights that are actually put up. Instead of helping the poor guy out, some yay who's over there with a the phone, and they're videoing all sorts of fights. And so the good part of this is that you don't have to down you know, a couple of pitchers of beer and pick a fight at 1 a.m. at your local tavern in order to see what fighting's like. It's all up on YouTube. Fascinating thing. People are shooting with the right hand. And if they're one step away, now I'm not talking about doing the big rooster thing where they're going pop, 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 and then all of a sudden uh, sucker punch. But if they're one step away, what you'll see is you'll see two things. Either the person coming in with unchecked commitment, which means they aren't hal halting their body in any way, shape, or form. The punch comes in and there's this follow through or check the momentum, which is a bit more trained. They end up in a solid base, but the punch comes through and the person still hits. Now, this, what we're doing right here is actually brilliant training. You notice when she comes in, as opposed to impacting, there's the contact, but then, yeah, there's the big follow-through. And that gives me a bit of reality as to what's coming. So, the nice thing about unchecked momentum is that if your head dodges, if you parry, and you capture the person in mid-motion, here's where a lot of your techniques are just gonna go just like this. Example. She throws the punch with the, with the Now, all I did, and I'll just go slow, is she started firing, and my body went sideways this way, my arm went up, and as her body followed through, coming forwards, I just drew her into me this way. Very, very simple. An example. Now, it could be something just as simple as if she fires with something unchecked. I move off to the side, ping, I move her, there you go. But if you're not used to having a partner do this, if you're used to having a partner do this, okay, your defenses aren't going to be as real. Now, it's the same thing with checked momentum because here it is she throws and it means to hit and if I take her arm away look how far she pushed my head okay she followed through on the strike yeah that gives it a bit, bit more reality now let's say she's using check momentum and I use the parry and the backhand style of wood chopping. When she does this, here's the interesting thing. She throws the shot and because she committed, notice how close she is. This would turn out to be a forearm strike to the neck 
as opposed to attempting to do hammer strike. When you practice against unchecked and checked momentum and the strikes are following through, what's going to happen is you're going to get a reality on the type of hits that you can do, the type of counters that you can do, and so forth. Let me give one more example. Now, I put on this glove and the combination elbow shoulder hinge that goes up is what I call a stealth punch. It just comes up very quickly, but why I call it a stealth punch is because it ends up traveling up the person's body. Now, for the sake of this example, I'm going to have Ashley put the left hand behind her this way. And when she comes in for, let's say, a checked momentum strike, she comes in and notice the bend travels right up the body, ding, and there's the up punch. Same type of thing if uh, she goes unchecked in rim. She fires and slowing this down, you notice I used an elbow shoulder hinge but on a horizontal basis. She came in, ding, but here's the fascinating thing. Unless I practice this against a real hit, all of this is theoretical. So, practice with the unchecked momentum, practice with the checked momentum. It'll serve your techniques right. Here's the solo action of moving inside of the kick and pushing the partner's head. The key trick on this is to rotate the body as you step so that you take the target away. You step in at just a slight angle and there goes your hand action. This is almost too simple, but the nice thing is it's very workable if your partner telegraphs by taking a step forward and then kicking. So, Stepping in, there goes the hand, up to the head. Now, watch how it's applied to the partner. Here's a variation of the dead angle projection. Now, one of the things I'll say in my school quite often is that anytime that you're up on one leg, any angle is a dead angle. This will work quite well if the person, let's say, telegraphs a back legged round kick. You see back leg and round kick in tie fighting, you see it in uh, MMA, and it's a marvelous knockout move. However, if the person telegraphs by the step, you can actually move on the inside. But what is even more important is that if she steps, you can meet that with a step, and you can push the head. Now, watch this again. Here, she's got the step, I've got the step. And bang, any impact that you catch off to the side is going to be pretty minimal. Watch that again. She steps, zip. I push the head. There she goes. If you do the same thing on the front kick, she steps in with the front kick. I shift. And bang, we've got the same thing. Simple, simple, simple. The key thing is, if you're this close, it's going to be awfully hard. Nothing says that you couldn't. She starts to do her move, and you step in, and you push backwards. Again, your timing is going to have to be very, very good. But as a round kick is a curve, you can step in. She's on one leg. So any push, any angle, that will be her dead angle. Practice this. It'll be quite a surprise for people who like to take that step and fire that kick at you. The come along to the back is an interesting lock in that you start out with how you start out your standing center lock and then you slide and you essentially get this come along thing that's behind your back. So, 
Arm goes up. I'm going to secure the arm as I step through. And now, I'm going to go very, very wide for, for the camera angle. But as I step around this way, as I bring this around, that will peel from the hand. This action, you notice I just keep bringing it sideways and it peels out. Now, as it peels, I want to maintain contact with the hand. This is why I've got this secure uh, uh, grip here. So I've got contact with the hand and you see how my fingers will come around the thumb, thumbs around the back of the hand. I rotate the fingers up, and what I have is, I'm going to turn the body this way, is I have a come along that where I brace her arm, I've got it braced on my stomach, I've got a hold of it, and as I compress the wrist, notice we have the reaction, I can move her, etc. So, I know this is difficult to see from a camera angle, but we do the best we can, which is up and out. You'll secure at the same time, and you won't have a rock hard grip because you may need to slide as you step back uh, behind her, but up and around, and I step through, my hand peels, and as it peels, It's going to slide down her hand just a little bit so that I can grab around the pad of her thumb and into the fingers. And then I've got this bend in here and we have to come along to the back. Now, the extension here is for your viewing. It's not what I would do in terms of you know, when I'm actually transferring the hand. When you're transferring the hand, you're actually keeping it very close to her so that you don't lose it. But if you notice, I'm going to turn her body, I'm going to step away, and you see where my thumb is? It's running over the back of her little finger. You see where my main fingers are going over the pad of her thumb. Do this one more time, and up connect, step under, step through, as I bring this around, as usual, I'm popping with my shoulder, I bring this in, I'll actually bring it in close to me, and then the hand peels, slides, bingo, I've got to come along with the back, you see. From a different vantage point, up, under, and you get a little better view of the peel. There's the hand as needed. Pull this in. We have the compression. Okay. Done smoothly. way. You see where I have her hand? I've got her hand by the rib. That's because I can feel the torque, you know, the tightness of the shoulder. Other people who have very, very uh, loose shoulders, you'll get the hand further back this way. It won't matter so much how far you get the shoulder in. The key thing is you've got the hand, you've got the elbow, and you've got the, the compression. That's going to be the key thing, the compression. Be safe with this one, it hurts. The basic action for the spiraling head throw generally is parry the arm, the other arm comes behind the neck, and it's almost like you're turning great big pirate ship wheel, you continue 
the turn. So the head goes down and the arm goes up. Now, as I'll explain when I work with my partner, I add leg actions into this so that we can disrupt the base. So your first action you've got is, you've got your parry down, your movement behind the head, and then your back leg is going to knee lift while you continue your turning of the pirate steering wheel. So we've got parry here, knee lift, and come back. The key thing is the knee lift will precede the finish of the turn. Parry, extend, knee lift, continue your turn. A variation of that is if they have their punch arm forwards and you've got parry, extend in. Now notice how I step in with my foot leg. I move that knee inwards and then continue my action. It looks a little funny doing a solo, but you do the solo action and it'll make a whole lot of sense with your partner. So we've got parry, I move in, arm out this way, knee rolls in, and then I continue my action. Let's take a look at what happens when I do this with partner. Next action we're going over is the spiraling head throw. Now, the manner in which it is done Usually, as the person throws the punch and you swing the arm up this way, you bring the hand behind the head, you pull down, you swing up, and they flip over. Now, there's a huge, huge problem in this, and that is right at this point, when I turn my hand upside down, I'm placing my arm in actually a very weak position for that arm. Now, what has Ashley done for the last 25 years? She's worked her whole structure so she can just plain stand up, which means from this position, she's in a very, very strong position. So I'm trying to move her with a weak position of my arm against a strong position of the body. I'd find this out uh, doing with my students who wouldn't dump for me. I would go here, and I come up like this and I start to pull and nothing would happen. Yet what you'd see in seminars is that you'd go here and the person would dump the mask and they go like this and oh magic. Or what I would see is in a seminar where you'd go here and then somebody would spin out of it and just like that and maybe you lock them up don't. Now, if the body is in a strong position, you can't pull, then what you've got to do is you've got to disrupt the base. No. She steps in, she throws the punch, I'm here, I'm going to use my thigh to hit her thigh, knock that leg up as I pull, and as I said earlier, when you're on one leg, any angle's a dead angle. This is exactly what I create. She throws the punch here and bang, down. Now, just slow from this side. She throws the punch. This can be a counter strike. But as this comes up, this comes forward like this, and we're not looking at a knee strike, knee strike into the thigh. We're looking at a lift so that my thigh actually comes in on the thigh and as it lifts, the head pulls down. And you notice how that began to like out from under. Now, if she throws the punch with the same leg forward, not a problem. She throws, I step, and again, Moving the knee, see what happens with the body when I move the knee, 
hip comes forward, chest comes forward. So that as I do this, and then I spin, and she goes down. Very, very simple. She throws, bang, I step in, pop. And then I continue this action of her head and her arm, very much like turning a steering wheel. So, the front side, here, in, knee slides the knee. I'm not going to try and hit the knee. I move the thigh. Now, I've got her. My feet, she has no structure to help. Good, I just keep this turning. She rolls down. Same thing, she's on the opposite side. She throws the punch, and if I'm here, and I lift up, you see, bang, leg goes up, body goes down. 